Hey guys, welcome back to Down Under and South of the Border. If you haven't subscribed, please hit it. So yeah, I'm a gay Christian now. How's that gonna work? I didn't think it could. One thing I kind of have struggled with is this whole concept of sin. Sin is actually often translated as missing the mark. So not this like, oh no, you've done a naughty thing, you're going to hell for all time, boo, boo, throw rocks. <laughs> It's not about that, um, it's just, yeah, you kind of could have done that better. It's more of an oops than a, ah! Yeah, so I guess this kind of makes sense to me. And sin may not essentially be a crime, as in that act may not be a crime for everyone at all times. Someone who smokes a lot of pot and goes into uh, psychosis, probably would be a sin for them to smoke pot again but for anyone else, it's fine. Another translation of what sin is, is the culpable breaking of the shalom, which is God's peace. So it's kind of, when you're just not going with the flow, when you're actively going against what the universe, what God, what, what destiny has planned for you, that's a sin, I guess. There are some easy options that are quite painful and in the end, Sometimes, that's the sin. Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. Ah! So how about the big question? Reconciling all this Christian stuff with my sexuality. Yeah, that took a bit of research, and I'm still not entirely sure what it says and what I choose to believe. Well, first of all, it says actually precious little on of all of it. It's like, it's like 1,200 pages, this thing. There's not that actual much in there about same-sex relations. So I guess at the very least we can say it's not exactly a priority of Jesus or God. Uh, secondly, the really bad stuff it says in the Bible about same-sex relations is mostly in the Old Testament. Leviticus says it's detestable and the blood shall be on their own heads. Uh, but it says that kind of heated language about people who wear two kinds of fabric. My mistake, Jacques Vim. Your mistake indeed! <laughs> People who ate shellfish, for example. Crabby, oh crabby. Either way, apparently, like Jesus came along, and all that stuff doesn't matter. The Old Testament is like useful prequel reading. Basically, almost anything is wrong. But I've prayed about it, and I really don't think my sexuality is one of those things that's wrong. If I'm having amazing, soul-affirming, life-affirming sex that's just doing nothing but bring happiness to the world. How can that be a bad thing? Honestly, as long as I'm making healthy choices and seeing my body as a temple, which it is, it's mightily and beautifully made, apparently. The Bible told me so. What's the issue with that? So when it comes to a personified evil, like a devil or a Satan, that I'm not so sold on. It can be useful, I guess, to see like a pattern of problematic behavior in an individual as maybe the devil that devil side, that nasty side, that, that shadow, I guess that could be useful. I think it's a way people see the seemingly chaotic and horrific state of the international geopolitical landscape and just reality as it is, as being controlled by a nasty devil cartoon character. That's a little safety net, it's a safe way of seeing the world. It's not just all chaos and out of control, that there is some nasty man pulling the strings, pulls the strings! Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria! I think in reality it's just a lot of nonsense. Which is actually a lot scarier. The world could appear as considerably more safe if we see a single culprit behind the chaos of our interior and external horrors. But I don't think this is the case. However, the idea of a bad cop, a disciplinarian style teacher who some people need, some people need more time in hell. Uh, before they're ready to choose something better, choose an unknown future, something more positive. Me and God are sweet for that, believe me. Me and Jesus are, we're, we're doing fine. It's just, I don't know if I want to add another label to my already confusing identity. I'm in constant flux with who I am and what I'm doing. So I don't know if I really want to add Christian to the mix, to be honest. And also, there's some pretty weird Christians out there Southern Baptist types, like, do I really want to be associated with them? I don't know, I've got some thinking to do. The church is actually the body of Christ, so every person in Christianity is supposed to have their 
certain aspects that they bring to the church, that they bring to human civilization, that they bring to the world, their gift. I think I might be Jesus's appendix. I don't know exactly how I fit into all this yet. And I, I don't like to join anything. I'm a bit worried about any club that would want me as a member. Maybe that's my part in all of this. Maybe that's my part in the church. I'm supposed to reconcile people, uh, people from the queer community, people from the Christian community, people in general. Maybe I'm just supposed to be a force of reconciliation in the world, bring people together that might otherwise not talk. That's pretty important, I think. I've probably upset probably quite a few Christians and non-Christians alike. I've probably got a lot of people thinking I've got this whole thing wrong, a whole bunch of other people thinking I'm a heretic and I'm going to hell and I'm going to hell anyway because I'm gay, but um, well, F you buddy, because Jesus loves me. That's it, that's the whole thing. I've got grace. Ha 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 ha, I've got grace. Grace. Grace is an amazing concept, like when you actually look into what that means, like Jesus died for our sins and came back to life and so now we're all sweet like we don't have to do anything we've got the prize heaven we've got it now it's here this is heaven i'm in heaven right now you are too Let's dig it which um i guess brings me to the title of this little lecture um jesus loves me so f you buddy the cosmic consciousness the universe the alpha and omega of everything loves me ha it's quite the confidence boost i can tell you now like, I finally see that if I seek God's peace, like the shalom, man, I could actually be content in my own skin. I could be happy. I don't have to self-flagellate because of the sins I've committed. Like, that's what I was doing way before I was a Christian anyway. Look, I'm probably going to upset some people, but haters will be haters, and I can't really do much about that. I'm going to be my authentic self, as much as I can be, and people will love that or they'll hate it. And what can I say? I am what I am, as Popeye said. And that brings me to the end of this episode. Guys, thank you for bearing with me in this philosophical journey we just had just now. I hope you can dig it. Um, I'm not going to be doing it heaps more. Okay, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel and please like the video. I'm sure I would like your video. Tell me too. Put it in the comment. I'll read it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do whatever you say. Um, check me out at Cobjack on Instagram, and I love you guys so much. Thank you for stopping by. Adios, amigos.